Hey guys, so on this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, I'm going to be giving you my initial impressions on this. The Artillery 3D SW X1 Sidewinder 3D Printer. So, let's dive into it. Okay, so first of all, for those obviously who are familiar, this is not my regular set. This is actually the set of Jimmy Shaw's Tidbits. I just happened to be over here on my way down south to Southern California for spring break, and Jimmy was nice enough to let me play with the Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1, so I can give you my honest first impressions on it. So let's dive into it. So obviously I did not build this machine, but I have been able to do some printing on it. I have to say, I'm actually very impressed with it. When I first heard about it, I was definitely a bit skeptical, only because I've had a little bit of experience with lower end import printers, and some of them are well, a bit dodgy, some of them are a bit better. Reality is, like anything, it's a little bit when I say hit and miss, I mean that in terms of it's either good or it's not, and it's kind of hard to find the middle ground. And that being said, this machine has definitely impressed me in all the right ways, although I feel like there's a few things that they could have done better on, but we'll cover that in a minute. First of all, I have to say the aesthetics of this machine are very nice. The design of it is very well thought out. Everything is definitely contained nicely. So if you didn't have a lot of space or you were trying to make a print farm, there's no weird LCDs hanging off to the side. There's no power units off to the side. It was all very well thought out. You have your power in the back, you have your switch in the back, you have your touch screen in the front, you have your USB drive and micro SD. Not a huge fan of the micro SD, but a huge fan of the thumb drive. I feel like that should be a feature on pretty much all modern printers these days alongside of an SD card, just given the fact that thumb drives, the USB ports tend to be a little more durable. Now moving over to the mechanics of the machine, I definitely give them points for setting it up with some very quiet drivers. Probably the most annoyingly loud thing, and it's really not that loud, is the cooling fan right here which quite honestly, if you really want to, you could probably put a baffle on it and cut down the noise. Moving on to the heated bed, it is a 110 volt heated bed, so it will go from zero to 60 in about a minute, and I'm not making that up. It will literally go from room temperature, about you know 10 to 15 degrees C on average, up to 60 degrees C in quite literally a minute, and it is spec spectacular when it does that. Now moving on to the hot end assembly, it is an E3D style volcano hot end with what appears to be also an E3D Titan style um, direct drive extruder, which is a pretty legit setup, I've got to admit. Now, while I'm a huge fan of the Bowden setup on my Ultimaker 2, I'm also running 2.85 millimeter filament over there so you can get away with the Bowden setup easier, but having the direct drive on a machine like this is definitely nice because it expands your abilities to do filaments and also it just gives you more precision because you don't have all that filament flopping around in a tube and while they've gotten better, they're still never gonna be perfect. Well, neither of us have tried doing flexible or soft filaments on this machine. I don't see why you couldn't potentially do that Although one caveat I will say about the Volcano is, for most of what I do, it is, um, SL it is FDM prototyping of SLA print, so I will usually be running at lower layer heights and or I will be running at a smaller nozzle than a 0.4, which is what this comes with. So the Volcano might not be the best for those applications, so just keep that in mind. Now, that being said though, I don't see why with a little bit of clever ingenuity somebody couldn't rig up a way to maybe make a regular style hot end work on here while keeping the same heat block on there. And also I'd love to see a dual extrusion version of this, mostly just for the ability to run either dissolving or breakaway support material separate from your regular printing material, which would be very, very nice for 
more complex prints and also just the big build volume on this would be helpful for train models as well, especially if you're into large scale or trying to do large buildings. Now the one thing I will say is I'm not a giant fan of the spool holder on here, mostly because the location of it means when the printer gets up into the higher reaches of travel, the filament is being drugged at some pretty extreme angles and unless you're running something pretty mm -hmm. flexible, it's not going to like that at all. But that being said, there's about a million different spool holder designs out there on the internet that you could easily adapt, being that this has the usual aluminum extrusion that you see on most of these machines, or you could very easily design up your own in Tinkercad, Fusion 360, SolidWorks, Onshape, you get the idea. So I guess in conclusion, I have to say that I'm actually pretty darn impressed with this machine. Now when I'm done talking about it, I'll show you some close-ups of the little train model that I did, and I'll talk about a few little issues I ran into on it, but nothing that bad. So I guess in conclusion, I'd say definitely a nice machine, although I do wish they'd put something other than just plain glass in the build plate here. A little bit of a letdown on a machine of this caliber to have a build plate that's just bare glass. Um, the super plate, silicon carbide materials, maybe some build tack, maybe a flex sheet. I don't know. Just, just a thought for the future. So let me show you guys the gloves of the models, and that'll conclude my initial impressions of the Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1. So one thing I will say that I also really like about this is the touch screen. It is super responsive, very easy to read, allows you to do all kinds of things, um, turn lights on and off, change the fan, change the speed. Um, yeah, very, very responsive touchscreen. Thumbs up from me over there. Here is the USB thumb drive that I'm using, and there's the micro SD slot, which we're not using because micro SDs are just stupidly tiny. Why not go with a regular SD? But, oh well. And here's a close-up of the train models. Now, the way that I can differentiate the two, being that this guy was done without any support material, and this guy was done with support material, is in this one little corner right here, sadly this little piece did not print the best. This one was printing a lot faster than this guy, so that played a role. But overall, I still have to say it turned out pretty nice. This was done at a 0.2 layer height, at I believe 45 millimeters a second in Simplify 3D. This one had supports all on the inside of here and also on the windows as well and for the little um, overhangs at the front there. So this one actually turned out very nice. That little issue right there I think was just due to printing speed. You do have to re realize that doing little areas like this is not exactly the easiest for a printer, especially with a larger nozzle, but it handled it very well overall, and I'm very impressed, considering that these two prints were sitting a little ways away from each other. No real signs of stringing or anything like that. Definitely a model that I could take, and minus that, I could go over this with some filler primer, hit it with some sandpaper, and be good to go. Also, the little uh, detail here around the door turned out pretty good. It didn't really print too well at the top and the bottom. It was quite literally a 10 thousandths um, little square groove that I'd cut in there. I really didn't even count on it printing because this will eventually be SLA printed. 
but oh well, no big deal. Now this guy is the impressive one. This one was done with zero support material, and I've got to say, even on these little underhangs over here, it turned out really good. Now the one thing I will say is because this was printed at a slower speed with the Volcano, it definitely is a little bit more ridgy. Then again, I think if I had upped the speed a little bit, it would have worked fine. But the inside is pretty impressive as well. I mean, sure, there's a little bit of um, droopiness inside, but considering that's about a four inch overhang in there, that's pretty impressive. And for comparison, there's the supported one, which it looks a little bit better. But overall, I mean, it's the inside of a print that was designed for SLA printing, not FDM. That's pretty darn impressive if you ask me. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.